Welcome back everyone to GGN. This is part four, the final part for today for Monday, September 9th, 2013. Okay, so the first article I have for you is global warming. No, actually we're cooling, claim scientists. A cold Arctic summer has led to a record increase in the ice cap, leading experts to predict a period of global cooling. There's been a 60% increase in the amount of ocean covered with ice compared to this time last year. So this is the equivalent of almost a million square miles. In a rebound from 2012's record low, an unbroken ice sheet more than half the size of Europe already stretches from the Canadian islands to Russia's northern shores. It says days before the annual refreeze is even set to begin. A leaked report from the UN, uh, basically the IPCC, or the uh, Intergovernmental Governmental Panel on Climate Change, these are purveyors of global man global warming, has led some scientists to claim that the world is heading for a period of cooling that will not end until the middle of the century. If correct, it would contradict computer forecasts of imminent catastrophic warming. The news comes several years after the BBC predicted that the Arctic would uh, be ice-free by 2013. Do you guys remember those emails um, that were coming out of... Uh, the UK, I'm trying to think of what it was, the Met Office or something like that, the emails, leaked emails that basically admitted that they were, uh, uh, that basically admitted that there was cooling taking place. Despite the original forecast, major climate research uh, centers now accept that there has been a pause, that's what they call it, in global warming since 1997. The original predictions led to billions being invested in green measures to combat the effects of climate change. Now, it's funny they call it, too, you know, the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. These were the same people that were trying to push a carbon tax. It was actually it was about uh, redistribution of the world's wealth by climate policy. This has almost nothing to do with environmental policy. The IPCC says it's 95% confident that global warming has been caused by humans up from 90% in 2007 where they kept talking about the extent of temperature rises and carbon dioxide levels and like I've mentioned uh, before where you have um, where you have scientists say that no it's actually uh, temperature that drives CO2 levels not CO2 levels driving temperature. So they're all saying that they're heading into a similar period from 1965 to 75 where there was a clear cooling trend. As some uh, says here at the at the time, some scientists forecast an imminent ice age. They also said that it will continue for about 15 years at least. This cooling period, no doubt, the warming of the 80s and 90s has stopped. It's funny. Other experts agree that natural cycles cannot explain all the record warming. Why can't? It's called spraying aerosols, and chemicals, and nanoparticles um, into the atmosphere to quote reflect sunlight solar radiation back into space the only problem is is that it's actually reflecting it and trapping heat into the planet causing a global warming effect yeah see yeah they didn't get that memo though it is good that they're calling for it, right that they're calling for doing this just geoengineering or weather modification to combat global warming maybe the whole point of it was to you know to build up uh, an engineered consent uh, program or campaign so that people would support geoengineering that would be used for so many different reasons besides weather modification. Um, this is from 2010, New Little Ice Age to begin in 2014. The head of the Russian-Ukrainian project Astrometria, uh, this, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, it says here his theory is that the long-term variations in the amount of solar energy reaching the Earth are the main and principal reasons driving and defining the whole mechanism of climate changes from the global warmings to the little ice ages to the big, big glacial periods. He says here that uh, these advocates of man-made caused warming when to curtail the use of hydrocarbon fuels. So he's saying it has to do with energy wars. He contended that a reasonable way to combat the coming cooling trends would be to maintain economic growth in order to adapt to an upcoming a little ice age. So talking about sun's activity determining temperatures, they notice he pointed to English astronomer Walter Monder, who noticed that sunspots had been generally absent from 1645 to 1715. The period coincided with the middle and the coldest parts of the Little Ice Age, which went all the way up to 1850. So that's crazy, because that was in 2010. So they knew about this, you know. And, uh, you know, what do the governments do? They don't, they don't tell people. They don't uh, change policy or alter it around it. You know. 
Uh, here's a little graph here, variations, solar activity from 1978 uh, to 2011. You can see it start to drop uh, basically, uh, was this around 2007, 2006? Their forecast of solar activity is going to diminish, it says here, uh, all the way up to the year 2045. So maybe that's where the big culling will take place. Or actually what I mean is uh, that may be the cause. I mean, it, it seems to be pointing towards the 2045-2050 uh, period. But hey, who cares, right? 15-nation Pacific Islands Forum Pact wins U.S. support to aggressively combat climate change. So they have this pact calling for aggressive action to combat climate change that have achieved a major accomplishment by gaining U.S. support. It contains specific pledges on cutting greenhouse gas emissions. They say climate change is the defining challenge of our time. 19-year-old inventor finds a way to clean up the world's oceans in under five years' time. So he says uh, he and his foundation have a way to clean up the world's oceans. It's called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, or sometimes the Pacific Trash Vortex, a massive collection of plastic particles accumulating in the Pacific. So he says they can remove all of this plastic waste with a concept that he calls an ocean cleanup array made from massive series of floating booms and process platforms that gradually suck in the floating plastic like a giant funnel. The angle with how the array is set up allows all of the plastic to go to where the platform's processing centers are floating. At the platform processing area, it would separate the naturally occurring life, such as plankton, and only keep the plastic materials to be recycled. Chemtrail poisons are ruining your health from above, and you may not know it. We've been getting sprayed here in the Midwest. Uh, today, you can literally see the aerosols, um, you know, a chemical haze uh, just 50 yards out. Just horrible. Of course, it was nice and hot. Uh, one of the chemicals being sprayed in uh, these chemtrails are aluminum. It causes all sorts of health problems as the chemical attacks the nervous system and causes everything from disturbed sleep, nervousness, emotional instability, memory loss, headaches, and I don't know if this was done on purpose or not, but an impaired, even impaired intellect. So. <laughs> but it says here that water samples were tested in California for high aluminum levels, enough to kill a moose. They said the levels are off the charts. So this is the thing, it's, uh, you know, it's like, you know, people have tried to bring this to their city councils and stuff like that, and they just completely ignored and laughed at. And this should be a very uh, uh, environmental type of movement, you know? So like that kid that in high school, the only reason that was promoted and he was, you know, uh, uh, given awards and prizes and, um, marine biologists were all for it. it was because it has something to do with the environment environmentalism which is kind of like a, a pseudo religion for these people yet when you try to bring up one of the most horrific attacks besides fluoridation of the water supply is the poisoning of the air and basically the atmosphere you know I forgot to mention the, the poisoning of the food supply i.e. GM, GM food so this should be up there but uh, you know it isn't Sleep helps boost brain cell reproduction. I thought this was an interesting uh, study that they found. It says new research developed that sleep can boost the reproduction of brain cells, uh, particularly those damaged ones that are essential for uh, the brain to function properly. It says sleep has a vital role in producing cells that are responsible for insulating material, known as myelin. But it goes on here, says it gives new insight into the popular disease uh, MS or multiple sclerosis which appears when myelin is damaged. In MS, the body's immune system attacks and destroys these myelin coating of nerves in the brain and spinal cord. This uh, says here, these whatever these things are, <laughs> they make myelin that allows electrical impulses to move rapidly from one cell to the next. Studies in mice revealed the production rate of the myelin making cells uh, immature, holla, whatever sites, doubled as animals slept. So extreme or chronic sleep deprivation switches on the genes involved in cell death and cellular stress response and aggravate the MS symptoms. A man lost in the Andes since uh, May lived on rats and raisins. So he got lost in a snowstorm four months ago. He survived on rats caught using a homemade trap, raisins, and supplies he found in a shelter. 
says he uh, says though he had lost 44 pounds. So they didn't really say uh, you know what his health condition was. Doctors expect to discharge him from the hospital within days. But I've seen uh, stories like this or heard of them about these people that uh, you know this was back in 2009. A Cambodian jungle woman flees back to the wild. Um, these people are found in the wild, and uh, you know society tries to drag them back in. Cambodia's jungle woman, who spent 18 years living in a dense forest, has fled back to the wild after struggling to adapt to society. But my point is, is that, um, is that these people a lot of times they don't even go to the hospital voluntarily. Um, they're actually forced to go to these to the to the pharma, basically the drug dealers. There's a uh, uh, hospital medical complex. V Remember, I covered this poor Vietnamese father and son found living in a treehouse for 40 years. So, and of course, you know, they got this guy. This guy's 82 years old. You know, he's obviously uh, healthy enough to make it. He doesn't really need your help if he's been out there for that long. And here's the son who was 42 years old. And you can see the people, you know, the slaves in the background got clothes made, uh, you know, by some slave labor in the neighboring country, maybe in their own country. Uh, laughing at him. Alien theme promotion for a radio station leads to concern over school safety. Another headline was that uh, this uh, radio spoof uh, causes mass panic. A radio promotion spoofing aliens hacking into an Alabama radio station spooked students into believing the schools uh, were being attacked. It was a mysterious misunderstanding uh, that has no logical explanation. Still, law enforcement in the area beefed up security at schools to calm fears from parents. This is the way it works, you know, I, even talking about the Syria, um, uh, hands-off Syria protest and anything else that's engineered from the top down to get the masses to do what they want them to do, is that uh, I guess if you want to be treated like, like a herd of cattle, then that's, you know, that's how you're going to act. Of course, this was done before by who, uh, what was it, Orson Welles back in the day? Twelve Connecticut kids are hurt when ride breaks. I remember just seeing an article or a story about another amusement park ride or something like that breaking. I'm not sure if there was injuries, but uh, you know, I like I said before, I, I, I wouldn't if I had kids, I wouldn't put them on uh, on these rides. A woman pulls gun and fends off carjackers. This is in Indiana. She was able to fend off a group of guys who pulled a gun on her while uh, they were trying to steal a car. She says here she got out of the car. Uh, there were three or four young guys approached her. I really didn't think too much about it. One of them was smiling. He was smiling, but he quickly pulled out a gun. He told me to give him the keys. She didn't turn over her keys, but realizing all her law books and belongings were in the car, she made a quick decision. With the gun still pointed at her, she reached into her center console to pull out her own gun. He said, oh, shit, and then ran. She said the boys look like teenagers, and as a mom, she can't get that out of her head. If these were my kids and they were out at 11.30 at night terrorizing women, I would scare the life out of them. She said she doesn't want to turn it into a pro-carry or, you know, anti-carry, but that uh, women need to keep their own safety in mind. You have to be aware of what can happen. And, of course, because they called them teenagers and, and boys, good chance one of them, you know, wearing a hoodie and stuff like that, that these were black guys. Not that white guys or anybody else doesn't do these types of things. It's just that, just to go show you how unbalanced the uh, media is. Or really just kind of probably just politically uh, correct and scared. This SWAT team shoots and kills a 107-year-old in standoff. And like someone said, I think they could have negotiated with this guy until nap time. You know. This one woman, she had a butter knife and was befuddled to put it down, so they shot her. Also, a naked guy in Pasadena climbing a lamppost uh, to spaced out to get down, and uh, they shot him. So it's all about compliance to authority. So Zimmerman, he just won't go away. He was in the news about the uh, divorce. He was in the news about not getting a ticket. Now he was in just in the news about getting a ticket. Now he's in the news about threat threatening her and her father uh, with his hand on the gun, apparently he punched her father in the nose. And this is complex because this has to do with two things. I'm not defending this piece of crap, but what I'm saying is, is that you had all the people that were uh, uh, for the evidence that said, I support the decision because the evidence pointed towards him being innocent, defending himself. So that basically legitimized the legal system, the court system, which I think is completely illegitimate. So by him getting let off, 
It's not that the court system is illegitimate, it's that it's unfair and racially biased against minorities and it's for whites or a white Latino. But they didn't get their race rights after the decision, so that's good news. Thanks.